Welcome to The Simple Truth. I'm glad you're here today as we open up the Word of God and we study in the book of Hebrews. We've been looking in Hebrews for several weeks now. Uh, God's heavenly order is what we've been calling this uh, series of programs on the book of Hebrews. We're in chapter 11. Uh, I hope you've got your Bibles out. I hope you're taking notes. Uh, and then uh, uh, on your own time later, go back and look at your notes and, and, and read the word for yourself and study it yourself. Uh, that way you'll get it into you better than just listening to it one time or just listening to someone else. Uh, take a few uh, verses out and speak to you. I want you to study on your own too. Uh, I want to help guide you, but I want you to study it also on your own time and, and, and let God speak to you. Um, matter of fact, uh, when you're studying the Word of God, just go ahead and start out with a prayer of saying, Lord, show me what you want me to know so that I can place it into my heart so that I can follow you better. And as we get into chapter 11 today, uh, starting with verse 1, let's, let's just believe that God's going to open up the Word to us and place what we need as an individual in our hearts. So verse 1 of chapter 11, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So here, this very popular verse that most Christians have, have <laughs> memorized and can tell you, faith isn't a solid thing, but it's called substance. And in a sense, it's called a, a title deed to the promises of God. And we know that, <clears throat> that all things, when you, when you get into the Word, you find out that even, even in verse 2, uh, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony, uh, they, it was faith, even though they didn't see the outcome of, of their belief that they had, they believed that God was going to do it and that they would see it at some point in time. Now, they didn't live to see it here on earth, but they will see it in eternity. Uh, this faith that we're talking about, uh, I want you to understand that, that faith is what starts things in the spiritual realm. And then is manifested into the physical. You know, we're told in chapter 10 that the just will live by faith. In other words, the way that we live is going to have to be in a faith that God is. Uh, in Corinthians, I believe it is, it tells us that we walk not by sight, but by faith. And that doesn't mean that we didn't, we close our eyes and walk around and bump into things. No, it's talking about our spiritual side that we, we don't have to see it first to believe that it's going to happen. That we have faith first and then see it. And that's the way God's promises are set up for us. Now, in verse 3, by the faith uh, we understand that the world was framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So you see, in the beginning, when God created, He simply spoke His word out. He said, let there be. If you go back to the first chapter of Genesis, you find God said, and it was, uh, on everything that was created. So God first spoke the word in faith. And sometimes we don't understand, we, we kind of gloss over that part where God has faith in his word. That when he says it, he believes that it's going to happen. And you and I, we need to have faith in God so that when, when we need something or we need something to happen, that we trust God for it and believe in His promises for it to happen. Now, verse 4. Uh, By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Uh, through which he obtained a witness that he was righteous. God testified of his gift and through it, him being dead, still speaks. In other words, what he's talking about here is Abel and Cain were brothers of Adam. And Abel gave a sacrifice that was acceptable because it was an animal sacrifice. It was a shedding of blood for the forgiveness of sins. 
where Cain's was the fruit of the land which he helped produce, okay? Uh, both of those sacrifices at different times are good to give, but when it comes to sin in our life and trusting God to forgive us, then the sacrifice of blood was, was the right one. And the grain was an offering. So, so it was the wrong offering that was being given. And so God respected that. And, and today, when it says, um, even though Abel's dead, it still speaks to us today because it talks about the shedding of the blood for the remission of sin. And it still speaks to us today. Now, verse 5. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now, we talk about Enoch, the seventh from Adam, and he walked with God 300 years. He lived to be 365, but, but he, you know, 300 of them years, he had a a personal relationship with God Almighty, that he walked with him, that he talked with him, and that God took him. Doesn't say he died, but he wasn't found, it says. Uh, he did not see death. So we take that with the understanding that Enoch is alive and well in heaven with the Lord. And I and as a side note, when we talk about revelation and we talk about the two witnesses, I believe because Enoch has not died yet, and it's appointed to every man to die once, I believe he's one of the two witnesses in the revelation that will be coming back at that time. He I believe he's one of the prophets. I know there's other people who think different ones than that, but but that's my thought on it, okay? Um, you, you can, I can't prove it, so know that that's my opinion, all right, uh, on that particular manner. Uh, but verse 6, but without faith it is impossible to please God, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So here's a, a, a parenthetic verse that's stuck in here that explains how Enoch pleased God and how you and I can please God and how all the patriarchs, the, the men of the Bible and women of the Bible that, that, that we read about of having faith, they did it because first they believed that God is, that He exists. And then they believed in the promises that He had. In other words, when, they, when God said to them that this was going to happen, they believed it. Whether they seen it right away or not, they still believed it. And so uh, I think this verse sometimes ought to be stuck along with verse 1. And they should be put together because it explains to us what faith is in a better manner. You know, we have to believe that God is, and then we have to believe that He is going to keep His promises and that His promises will come to us. But we have to believe it without seeing them first so that we can receive them. If we see them first, it's not hope. Okay? We hope that it will come. And our hope is that belief, that faith that God is faithful to bring it about. Now verse 7. By faith Noah being divinely warned of things not yet seen. Moved with godly fear. Prepared an ark for the saving of his household. By which he condemned the world. And became heir of righteousness. Which is according to faith. So we see Noah was told that there was going to be a flood. That he needed to build an ark. A huge boat. Uh, that he was to, to uh, not only have his family on there, but, but uh, 
two of each kind and some seven of each kind. Uh, we, we think that they came on the ark two at a time. Well, they may have came on two at a time, but some of the animals uh, that were brought on uh, there was seven of them and not just two. Uh, so um, you can read that back in Genesis also. Uh, and I think we might go back to those uh, at a later date and look at those things to show that what he's saying here is what he's talking about there. Uh, but he believed him and in saving his household. And because um, many scholars believe it took 120 years for Noah and his family to build the ark. Uh, and everyone around them, you know, made fun of them. Um, you know, they didn't understand what was going on and, and therefore, in a sense, condemned them because they would not accept what, what uh, Enoch or uh, Noah was, was bringing to them. It was telling them what God would said. And then we come to Abraham, verse 8. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out of the place which he would receive an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. So uh, in this story, G, uh, God has told Abram uh, at that time. He's Abraham now. But to be called out from his family and from the country he was in to a place he didn't know where he was going, that God said, I'll show you. And boy, doesn't that remind us of the day. God doesn't show us the complete picture of how our personal lives are going to be. Um, he shows us a step at a time. Uh, I've, I've said in other programs that, that if he had told me I was going to be on TV 30 years ago when I started teaching, this probably wouldn't be happening. But, but he had taken me one step at a time, and he will take you one step at a time. And he's taken Abraham one step at a time. Be faithful in the small things, and he'll give you the bigger thing. So here we find Abraham, he's obeying the call that God has given him to move away from his family to where his inheritance would be. But he didn't know where he was going. Verse 9, by faith he dwelled in the land of promise, as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he... For he waited for the city which was foundations, whose builder and maker is God. So here we see um, he's coming to the, into the area that would be called the promised land. And yet he dwelled there in tents. He didn't have a house to live in. He didn't live in a city. He was like a stranger in his inheritance here the, in the country that God has given him for an inheritance. And he lived there in tents with, with his son Isaac and Jacob his grandson. Okay? And they were heirs with him, which tells us that we are heirs with Abraham through faith into the promises that God has for you and I. And for them. You see, he was looking for a city that man did not make, but God built. It's that heavenly city that we're talking about. It's the new Jerusalem that we're talking about here. And he had faith that even though he was dwelling in a tent, he was still looking forward to the new Jerusalem and the promises that God would bring through him, through him and to his descendants. Verse 11, by faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. So here again, even though um, we read in the story that Sarah laughed when when the angels, which I believe Christ was one of those, said that Abraham would have a son through Sarah, and it was the son of promise. Okay? Even though she laughed at that time, we still find out that 
that she did bear a child because she judged who said it faithful. In other words, she believed that when God said, Abraham, you and Sarah are going to have a son, he was that, at that time a son of promise because he wasn't there. They believed and she believed and it happened. Verse 12, therefore from one man and him as good as dead were born as many as the stars of the sky and multitude in numerous as the sands which is by the seashore. So again, in the Old Testament, God had told through, an, through the angel of the Lord that his descendants would be as the stars in the sky or as innumerable, you know, un, unknown total number that we can't even count as the sands of the sea. So on our seashore. So he's saying Abraham was 100 years old when Isaac was born. Sarah was 90 years old when Isaac was born. So here we see what should have been an impossibility because of their great age, God made it possible. And here we find that, that, that God can do the impossible and that we can not only believe what He says, but trust Him for the promises that you and I haven't seen yet. So verse 13, these all died in faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So here we see the idea. They died in faith, not seeing a promise. And I believe the promise that they're talking about in these verses is the promise of the Messiah to come who would take away sin who would be God incarnated, who would be the one, the only begotten of, of God Himself. And they had the faith, even though they died, believing that the promise was still coming. And they had that assurance that even though they, 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 was, they would confess this, even though they were strangers... <laughs> actually in the promised land itself that God had given them, they realized that they was not looking for a city that's on the earth, but they was looking for a new Jerusalem that God made and built and brought, will bring down to us in, the, in, in that, his time period, okay? We don't know when that's going to be. Uh, we can look forward to it. It's still at blessed hope that we're looking at. Uh, verse 14, for those who uh, say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And truly, if they had called to mind the country from which they had come out, they would have opportunity to return to. So what he's saying is <clears throat> they have plainly knew that the homeland that they were seeking was not the one they left that because they could have went back to where they came from. Abraham could have went back to Ur where he came from, but he was looking ahead to a country that God was in charge of and that the promises that God had given him would be coming through. So verse 16, but now they desired a better uh, and is a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to call them, be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. So here again, he's talking about New Jerusalem. They was, God said, because you have faith in me, because you believe that I am, and I'm a rewarder of those who believe, and you have faith in that, then... I want you to know I have a heavenly city for you. I have a heavenly country for you. I have a place for you that I make for you, a dwelling place in eternity for us to live in. 
Verse 17, by faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, In Isaac your seed shall be called, concluding that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from which he would also receive him in a figurative sense. Now, the story in the Old Testament was, was God told Abraham to leave the, the village, well, not in the village, but his community he was at uh, with his son. Uh, and they went up into the mountain to where God had showed him to go. And he was supposed to sacrifice Isaac. And of course, when Abraham was ready to kill Isaac, uh, the Lord said, stop, wait, don't hurt the lad. But you understand, Abraham believed that even if he killed his son, God would raise him up again. And that the promise that he made that, that your seed shall be called, in other words, the seed of Abraham would go through Isaac and on into generations to come. Uh, and even if, if, if Abraham killed him at this time, following God's word, he would raise him up again. But God stopped him. God did not ask him to kill him. But he made a, a they seen that a ram was stuck in a thicket and that was the sacrifice that God had prepared for him. Again, showing us that God had prepared a sacrifice for our sins through the Lord Jesus Christ who died for our sins and rose again. And we see a picture of this when he's talking about in these two, three verses about Isaac and Abraham. Uh, going on, by faith... Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was, was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshiped, leaning on the top of, of his staff. So here we see um, that Isaac blessed Jacob, his son, and Esau. And it doesn't tell us about the kind of people they were other than then they was a cross here. Um, most of the time, Esau, who was the oldest brother, would get a double portion, and then the rest would go to the rest of the family that would be inheriting. But Esau had sold his inheritance. We we'll maybe talk about that a little later. By faith, in verse 21, by faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worship, leaning on top of his staff. So, we, we hear again that uh, it was important for the patriarch or the father of the family uh, to bless the sons. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, you know, how much of that is going on today where a father will bless their children as they grow. Uh, unfortunately, I think sometimes we spend more time cursing our children than we do blessing them. But when we bless them, it puts them in a, in a place of faith of knowing that they will receive the promise. Um, verse 22, by faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel, gave instruction concerning his bones. You see, Joseph was the one who was sold into slavery and ended up in Egypt. And that whole story there uh, and how the... Uh, Israelites, the Hebrews, got back into Egypt and they became slaves there for 400 years. And yet, before Joseph died, he said, when you leave this land, take my bones. I don't want to stay here. Take me into the promised land. And they obeyed that. And in the Old Testament, we see that that happened, that when the Israelites were led by Moses out of Egypt, his bones was dug up and took with them. Uh, verse 23, by faith Moses when he was born was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. Uh, so here we find that Moses' parents 
not only seen that he probably physically was a beautiful child, but also he was a special child, that there was a, something special about him that they knew from God. And by faith, they put him in a reed basket and sent him out onto the Nile. And, you know, there's lots of Nile crocodiles. And, and you know, you, so you, you see where God's provision and took him into where Pharaoh's daughter was, was bathing and she found him and raised him as her own. Verse 24, by faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. So you see that there was an age when Moses realized that he was a Hebrew, not an Egyptian. And even though it would have been better for him in this physical life to be a part of Pharaoh's family, he chose the Israelites. He chose the Hebrews. <clears throat> Verse 25, rather, uh, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the, the passing pleasures of sin, uh, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasure in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. So here again, he had been taught about the promises and he seen that even though he was going to have to suffer, it was better to suffer and gain Christ than to have the pleasures and the riches of Egypt for the time being, for a temporal time. He's looking for that reward uh, for eternity that we all can have when we're being faithful to Christ. We need to understand that, that even though that we might suffer here, we are still in God's will. We are still knowing by faith that it's far better to suffer for a little while here in this life than to suffer in eternity forever, where we can have Instead, by following Christ, have eternal salvation, a complete salvation, not just partial like we have now, so that we can follow him. We do that by faith, knowing that God is and that he will keep his promises. So as you think about this lesson, think about the promises of God that's made to you through his word. God bless you. We'll see you next week.